Every morning when I come to work, I am reminded that the church sits literally in the shadow of the Clarion County Courthouse. It is a poignant reminder to me that I am a citizen of this world and of God's kingdom at the same time. With feet firmly planted in both realms at all times. And as such, I have a responsibility in both worlds. Worlds that I truly believe are governed and under the authority of God, even though at times there is little evidence of that being true. I sat with horror yesterday as I heard and later watched the news of what was going on in our nation's capital. I have not felt those feelings since the morning of 9-11 when I saw the second airplane hit the Twin Towers. I was sick. I was sick not only because of what it meant for our nation, but I was sick recognizing that I had failed in my responsibilities as a citizen of this world and a citizen of God's kingdom. I had allowed myself to get lazy, to let others govern freely for me without taking the time or the effort to be informed about what was really going on, whether it was in my community or the county or the state or the nation. I became complacent and at times cynical, but in all of it, aloof and unwilling to get my hands dirty. I allowed to, myself to be bullied by the political rhetoric on both sides to the point of being silent in an effort to hold together family and friends and parishioners for the sake of peace and harmony. I failed to speak for those who have no voice. I failed to call into question comments and behaviors of my legislators. I failed. My job as a citizen of this world. In like manner, I failed as a member of the kingdom of God as well. For I forgot who I was and whose I was. I got sucked into the vortex of violence and divisive rhetoric. One of the scariest moments of yesterday was sitting watching what was going on on the steps of the Capitol and realizing that if I had been in charge of those who were called in to quell the insurrection, it would have been a bloodbath. Without a second thought or regret. There's a reason I don't keep a gun in my house. It's to protect you. 
I have given in to anger. I have given in to silence. I have given in to name calling and labeling. I have not done the work of reconciliation. I have been unwilling to have those hard discussions with others. I have failed to walk the walk to which I have been called. There are many who want to blame Trump for yesterday. But the truth of the matter is, if there is someone to blame, it's me. Because I failed. I recognize I'm not alone. I share the blame with you and with millions of the citizens of these United States. Trump did not cause this. We did. By our abdication of faithful citizenship in both the world and the kingdom. If this great democracy is to survive and not go the way of every other empire in world history, then we must do better. We must accept our responsibility in this debacle and our responsibility to fix it. As citizens of the world, we all need to be informed. And that does not mean watching CNN or Fox News. It means serious investigation, reading, and discussion of the issues before us in every level of government. It means we cannot sit in our comfy chairs and play Monday morning political quarterback. It's time to get our hands dirty, to take a place in the government as we are able whether that is on a local level or whether it is being involved in state or county or national work. We can no longer tolerate the partisanship that has divided our political world. We need to find ways to work together. Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, for the sake of the nation and not for the sake of ideologies. It means that we hold our legislatures accountable to their behaviors, their words, their actions. It means that they need to pay less attention about being reelected or pandering to a consumer constituency and begin to address the needs of the world. It means an end to the violence and the inciting of rebellion and division. A word to my younger friends and colleagues. 
I was greatly heartened in your participation in recent years at all levels of government. But you need to do more. We are counting on your presence and the gifts that you bring and the insights that my generation abdicated. For them, I apologize. You have been handed a mess, and we need you. As citizens of the kingdom, we must continue to raise up leaders with values, morals, and integrity to take their place in the world. We have a responsibility for the government as well in upholding our values of being models for the world of moral integrity in short of walking the walk as well as talking the talk. We need to find ways to carry on discourse within the church rather than letting the radical wings dictate the kingdom's agenda. How do we use our marvelous tradition of church history, of scripture, of confessions, to sit down at one table and to talk about issues that currently divide us. How do we live out the identity of our God, who self-identifies as the God of mercy, justice, loving kindness, and peace. How do we embody those qualities? How do we accept our role as repairers of the breach, as a light to the nation, and as ministers of reconciliation? We have lots of work to do, my friends. And the future of this country is indeed at stake. One of the most horrifying realities of yesterday was that as all these resources were being squandered, in an effort to placate an infantile bully who has lost his job. We experience the deadliest day of the pandemic. More people died yesterday than they had at any other time in this year. That's just criminal. We can do better. And my prayer is, we shall do better. But it begins with us and not with them. It's our responsibility as citizens of this world and as citizens of God's kingdom. And so I end today with a prayer from Sister Ruth Fox. 
Let us pray. May God bless us with this comfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may live deep within your heart. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, hunger, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in the world, so that we can do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all of God's children. Amen.